When most people get CNC's, they think it's going to be plug and play, and they're going to be building projects that very same day. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. What most get is an expensive, loud, confusing mess that they don't even know how to operate. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what it really feels like when you get your first CNC and all the different stages you're going to go through in order to become that veteran. And if you are that veteran, you're going to relate to a lot of these points. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I wish somebody told me was how confused I was going to be on day one. Right? So when you first get your CNC in, you're going to have three different variables working against you. You're going to have operator error, right? Because you don't know what you're doing. You're going to have the software that you have to figure out. And the third thing is that you're assuming your machine is going to do what you tell it to do. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. And so how this works is you're gonna get your machine in, you think you're gonna assemble it right, you're gonna set it on the table. Okay, well now I have to program that. And you've already watched all those boring program videos, and so you go to program it and you still feel like, like you don't know what you're doing. And then you finally get a shred of confidence, you plug that flash drive into your CNC, and you try to click go, and then an error flashes up, right? and or an alarm goes off or the CNC just goes randomly off into some corner. That feeling, it's very lonely, right? And that's why CNC communities, whether it's a Facebook group, whether it's a forum that you bought the CNC from, good customer service, that's where that comes in because the learning curve, when you very first get your CNC, is extremely steep. And I don't care if it's your very first CNC or your third CNC or even my ninth CNC, I still had that learning curve where stuff just didn't go right and I didn't know what the heck to do. So I had to pick up the phone and call somebody. And so whenever you're going through that, that learning curve is steep and then it gets less steep. It'll start kind of tapering off and your learning will compound on each other. Right? So if you do get a CNC and you feel dumb or beat or stupid, you are not. You are just going through those trials and tribulations. And yes, they do make you feel stupid like you don't know what you're doing. But if you're a veteran watching this, leave a comment down below because we have all been there. We've all felt defeated looking at this screen, looking at this machine, trying to flip it over, cussing it out. Now, the next thing that I wish somebody told me was how loud these things are. Because whenever they run, and this doesn't hurt me so bad because I'm in the country, but if you're in an apartment and you're in your garage, these things scream really, really loud. So not only do you have to have a lot of headphones or earbuds, your neighbors may hear you. And so that's just something to consider when looking at these is how loud they're going to get. And while they're being loud, they're going to throw dust everywhere. And obviously this is a little studio, so it's not too dusty, but whenever you have a shop vac on it or a dust collector on it, it's still not going to pick up all the dust. So dust will always be a problem and noise will always be a problem. Hobby CNC scream, industrial CNC scream, they scream a little less but they all scream when they're cutting and they all are dusty and dust collection is never perfect on a CNC. And another thing people learn too late is they don't like and subscribe to cutting it close. So give us a like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comments down below. Now the next thing is that you're gonna need more gear than you realize. And so let me walk you over here just through this and show you just how much stuff you might need. So this is our CNC room. This is our original CNC room where, as you can see, the amount of gear that we ended up acquiring to run all these CNCs does start building up, right? You're not just getting a CNC, you have to buy the software then. And that software is usually not, a, not very cheap. Then you have to worry about dust collection, right? You can use a shop vac like right here, like we do on some of our smaller machines, or you have to get a full out dust collector. And all of that stuff starts compounding on itself. And depending on what you're doing, let's say you just wanted to get a CNC and stick it in a small room. Well, now you need a sander, a router, a miter saw, stuff like that. Now, I do think there's a lot of different solutions where you don't have to have a ton of equipment. There's a lot of 
oh crap moment, right? When you first get it, you're like, oh crap, I didn't know I need that. Oh crap, I didn't know I needed that. So I would say keep that in your budget when you get a CNC, right? The shop vac, the bits, the software, just keep a couple hundred bucks set to the side for all the other random stuff, maybe an air compressor, right? All of those random stuff starts adding up, but once again, you are building a system around that CNC, not just a simple plug and play machine. Now, let's head back to the studio, go over the next point. Now, this next thing is probably gonna piss some people off, but it needs to be said, I don't think you should cheap out on a CNC. I don't think you should buy a $150 or $500 CNC off of Amazon. People are gonna argue with me on this, but remember those three variables, right? You have you being able to be a good designer, you being able to be a good operator, and the machine knowing what to do, right? I have CIC Academy, we have a lot of members in it, and the number one biggest thing we hear inside of it is people that buy a new CNC and they barely scrape up enough money to get it and they get it and they're very frustrated and very defeated because they've learned all the software right. They're talking to us inside the community so they know they know what they're doing, so they know how to program, they know how to use it, but the machine is just not running correctly, right? It keeps messing up and they have to talk to customer service and the customer service sends them apart and then two weeks later they get it and they finally get the machine up and running and it's been a month and they haven't even cut out their very first project. This happens over and over and over again. So I would say underneath like $1,500 on a CNC, what you pay is what you get. What a piece of junk. Beware that when you get a cheap CNC that you can buy off of Amazon, you're gonna have cheap Amazon CNC problems. And so if you spend that little extra money, you're gonna make it up in the time that you saved on the machine actually working and doing what the hell you tell it to do. I get so pissed on this one because once again, that is the number one thing. Somebody saves up their money, they spend a thousand dollars on a small CNC the fast as they can, it never ends up working, they can't sell it for anything, and they end up spending the three thousand dollars on the CNC they should have bought the first time. And so just be aware of that and that's something that not only I wish I was told, but I wish I could tell more people to not make that mistake because it just sucks. Now the next thing is going to be how many bits you're probably gonna buy. Now this is kind of funny, but kind of fun. So let me show you. This is the original bit set that I got 10 years ago. And I still have a couple bits in there, actually three bits in there that I have never ever touched yet. Now, one, because I forgot they were in there, but two, because my first three years, I never needed them. And whenever I figured out what bit I was going to use, I ended up using a whole bunch of them. And so whenever I say you're probably gonna buy too many bits, you're going to get a massive, probably set of bits, whether it's from the company, or you're gonna be like really excited and you're just gonna buy all these different bits. And then it turns out you're gonna make a project and you're only gonna use a quarter inch down cut, a 60 degree V bit and an eighth inch up cut. And you're never gonna use a tapered ball nose cause you're never gonna carve anything, right? I've had so many bits that I've only ever used one time because I wanted to try this project. I spent 20, 30 bucks on the bit and never used it again. So I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's a thing. And you will buy a ton of bits. Now I do have a five beginner bit starter set on CIC Workshop, you wanna check that out. It's the five essentials that I do recommend so you don't go and spend a whole bunch of money on bits you don't need. But once again, it's, it's just a thing. You're gonna do it, you're gonna get excited. It's kinda of like down here, every redneck in the world has 20 guns. I don't know why, we just have a lot of guns. It's a thing. You know, we don't need it, we don't go hunting that much. We just have them. Same thing, you're gonna have a lot of bits, you won't need them, you'll just have them and they are pretty cool to look at, not gonna lie. The last thing I want to tell you is these CNCs will not pay for themselves in the first 30 days. If you think you're gonna plug it in and it starts printing out money and this thing spins and starts spitting out change and quarters, that is not a thing that's gonna happen. And what most people do when they first get a CNC, they think, oh my gosh, this is the next best thing. 
Once again, I've always equated it to just buying another tool, buying a planer, right? Like, or if you're a fisherman, if you buy a new rod and reel, it doesn't mean you're gonna catch fish. It doesn't make you a better fisherman. It makes you have the chance of becoming a better fisherman, right? Because you have a little bit better equipment. So let's say you do splurge and spend that three, four, five thousand dollars on a C and C, and you have the plan in place, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this, and within two weeks it's gonna be printing out money. More likely than not, you're gonna be in that confusion phase still in the first two weeks. You're not gonna know exactly what to do, and you're gonna be so excited to bring a product to market that you're gonna overestimate it, overcomplicate it, buy way too many things, buy way too many bits, and by the end of the first month, nobody even knows you even make it, right? And so it's very important, I always tell people this, you need to start making stuff as soon as possible, get it out to the world, post a picture of it, make an Etsy shop, and realistically, if you have a sound plan in place, and let's say you buy a machine for $4,000, you would probably pay it off within the first 90 days. Now, I've paid off my first CNC in the first year. It took me a little bit, but after I learned how to do with it, then it started making money hand over fist. My shop saber that I bought, the five foot by 10 foot CNC, it paid itself off in the first three months, and it was a $70,000 machine. Still took three months, but it was spitting out enough product to kind of pay for itself as well. So don't think in the first 30 days, you know, you put it on a credit card and 30 days later, you don't have to pay for it because the machine is gonna pay for itself. Like, don't think that way. You're probably gonna still be in that confusing, confusing uphill battle stage. You may even have a part coming in the mail and your CNC may not even be up yet. So these are different things that I wish people have told me and I see all the time, whether it's in CIC Academy or messages coming in on CIC Workshop that I wish people have told me. So I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.